and my camera was doing something strange, but seems to still be recording. Okay, so I'm going to use a hexagonal 13 on there because it's a bit, a bit worried that the bolt, the nut, sorry, the bolt might uh, round off. If I can find it. 14. Whoa, 13 on us somewhere else. 13, 15, 13. my uh, 13 hexa he uh, hexagonal Okay, that's good. That's off. Next one. Oh, definitely gonna have to get a spanner on there. Uh, well, not too bad. So here, this thing should just come out and dangle down. Again, this has not been, I don't think this has ever been split, this, this uh, gearbox. Oops. That'll do. Just as good an angle. I think it's the original um, clutch as well. It's got 160,000 miles on it. No, sorry, it's got 160,000 well, it's actually more now. It's probably like 168,000 kilometres on it. Which is probably about 122,000 miles. Which, uh, especially this era of vehicle, that was probably around about the normal lifespan of a clutch. Around about 120,000, 130,000 mark. Depending on how the vehicle's been driven. With this being a full size camper uh, obviously the clutch is probably one of the most you know um, strained components the so engines on these are uh, typically derated to the amount of power they can actually uh, you know take and these gearboxes uh, bomb proof uh, they also put them in the G-Wagon it's a full cast iron design except for the bell housing the whole box is cast iron so very strong boxes could handle hell, a hell of a lot more power if they really wanted to but they wanted them to last a long time so they de you know over engineered everything oops do not want to lose that that was another nut so you can see that's the uh, rod pushes the clutch fork so I'm just gonna let that hang so I'm just gonna tuck it up over here get it out of the way that'll do let's keep it there for now so it's out of the way I'll probably uh tie clip it up somewhere so it doesn't fall anyway so that's those pieces off um I'm gonna start tackling a couple of these bell housing bolts 
which are uh, again not too bad, not too hard to get to. So we're going to need a, I think that's a, a 19. Seventeen. Bloody hell. Alright, okay. So we're just gonna see if we can get these off with the impact gun. Well, it's not exactly a impact gun, it's a impact driver. Did notice quite a few of these nuts so are not very tight. Oh well could that get some straight out? No. Oh, I can't get that one out well. Do a half inch gun, but it's a little bit overkill for these. That's what I use on my semi truck. Um, it's a little bit big as well. Did notice that I've got a little bit of a weeping manifold gasket on one of the uh, um, outlets on the number number five, the rear of the engine. Hmm, never noticed that. Um, So, the next option is to try and crack some rolls off by hand. job on that. I used to uh, use uh, pneumatic everything, the pneumatic ratchets, pneumatic guns, to make so much noise and also uh, the technology now for the, uh, you know, the 